Hello you sexy beasts and welcome back to War Thunder. This is the IS-6, also known to many of you as the BIAS-6, for pretty good reason and in fact you're going to see that in this video. This is a rank 4 battle rating 7.0 Soviet premium heavy tank. It comes equipped with a 122mm D-30T cannon with a total ma ammo load of 30 rounds. This D-30T cannon is an upgrade over the D-25T cannon which is featured on most of the other IS series tanks and features a faster reload. In fact, just slightly slower than the T-10M on a fully aced crew, something like 15.6 seconds if I'm not mistaken, which massively improves the combat effectiveness of this tank. Besides the main gun, you also have a 12.7mm DSHK machine gun on the top of the turret, which is controlled by the commander, and is very useful in dealing with lightly armored vehicles and enemy aircraft, as well as getting a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun. Now, let's start off with the negatives of this tank first, shall we? The gun has pretty bad depression. Negative 3 degrees, which means you aren't really going to be cresting any hills with this thing. You do have a 20 degree elevation, but that's pretty much standard and you're not going to use that too much. Secondly, the tank is also pretty heavy, 51.1 tons of total weight. However, it also has a 700 horsepower engine, which gives it a power to weight ratio of 13.7 horsepower per ton. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but this is actually a huge benefit. In fact, pretty much the drawbacks of the tank have already ended. Except for one, which we're going to... Actually, which we can talk about right now. We are facing off against the Americans, and there's about three to four T-29, T-34 heavy tanks on our front. Now, that tank has about 300mm of armor on the gun shield, and no way in hell can we penetrate the turret. You see, the thing with the IS-6 is, despite having great armor, having 100mm pretty much all around on the front, on the sides, 150mm on uh, pretty much all around on the turret except for the rear, and in fact 200mm on the front, that's something that's actually quite um, misleading, is in the armor view you can see 150mm on the gun shield, but there's another 50mm plate behind that, which also acts kind of like spaced armor and is probably the reason for the majority of rage of anyone who faces off against the IS-6. However, the gun has limited ammo choices. You only have a choice between three shells, one high explosive shell, your box standard 122 high explosive shell, which has about 36 mm of penetration, if I'm not mistaken. Then you also have a 200 mm APHE shell and a 207 mm penetration APHE shell, which aren't really that effective against enemy heavy tanks. Now, facing off against the T-34s, we lost already a great deal of our team. I was trying to advance, chase them down, using my armor to really fulfill the heavy tank role, but we got taken out by a T-29 from the side. Pretty perfectly clean shot into the, into the crew compartment. The 105mm APH is absolutely devastating, and you can all, uh, actually see all the tiny bullet holes from the 50 cars that the enemy were firing at us to try and distract us. Well, we are not over and done just yet. Death Engagement has given us enough spawn points to spawn in the SU-6. Probably the Russians' best and really only really viable attacker. This thing comes equipped with up to 10 rockets, which aren't quite as effective as the RP-3, but are still a one-shot hit if you hit the enemy directly in the right spot. Apart from the rockets, it also comes with two 37mm cannons. These are the same 37mm cannons which you can find on the Yak-9T. They have up to 60mm of penetration with the AP belt, and such are actually very, 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 very useful in dealing with enemy light tanks, like the M18s, for example, as well as dealing with heavy tanks by going through the engine deck, going through the turret top, and killing crew, killing critical components and setting engines on fire. However, this thing is also very, very, very heavy. Unlike the British attackers which, apart from having more rockets and better rockets at that, they are also quite agile. Especially the Firefly feels quite agile indeed, even with the full ammo load. Not quite a turn fighter, but not too bad. 
This thing, not really. You have to plan your attack routes pretty, pretty good or else you face the risk of not being able to pull out in time. Thankfully the enemy was kind of ignoring us yet, actually, so we took out a P-47 and a P-51, but now we have another P-47 on our rear and even against the P-47. The P-47 is not a great turn fighter, but it's still going to be turning better than this thing. It's just too heavy. I try to slow myself down, he hits my engine, disables my engine, I try to make him overshoot and... Ah, I fire just a split second too late and don't get the kill. But, no problem. That one hit against the tank as well as the two aircraft kills has given us enough spawn points to spawn into the IS-6 again using a backup. Now this is a specific reason that I spawned into the IS-6 again, I do have other tanks in my lineup. However, the situation is looking pretty damn grim right now. There are only three players left on our team. The enemy has completely ruffle stomped through our team. In the front is an enemy, t an enemy tank sniping into our base, which means that I can't really afford to turn the turret. So, I have a keybind, which allows me to control the top mounted MG separately. There are currently 203 aircraft circling around, and I have to try and defend myself from them without rotating my turret and exposing it to that M41 Walker Bulldog, which is very smartly using that rock as a cover and trying to snap into our spawn. In fact, he just took a shot at the Kugel bit a little bit earlier. Now, this is actually really quite useful, being able to control the machine gun separately, especially given the caliber of 12.7mm. It isn't exactly a one-shot machine against aircraft, you aren't really going to get many instant kills with this, but the Russian MGs are very good at setting fires and doing critical damage. If the enemy aircraft is flying towards you, which they will be if they are ground attacking you, you can very easily take down their engine, set them on fire and if not outright kill them, at least disable them and stop them from going after you. And even then, that's only against the dumb pilots, which will continue to attack you even if they see the threats coming their way. The smart pilots will break off their attack run and give you a couple more seconds to live, essentially. Now, we didn't have much of a reason to move from our spawn at this point, given that we only had three people left, and I don't know where the enemy team is. Now we do. There is a T-29 or T-34 capping our home base. Now, I am the only tank that can deal with that guy. I tried to go for the uh, shot through the upper hull, sadly hits the track and doesn't quite penetrate. That's really the problem of this tank. You don't have enough penetration to deal with enemy head tanks. But what is that? We got shot up from behind. Oh god, no. That is an M46 who snuck all the way around into our spawn. He didn't do much damage though. What? Look at the trace of I look at the chaos, what just happened? It seems like the M46 was using a heat FS shell and only managed to take out our commander while taking out the cannon breach, which gave us a chance to turn around and put a shot right into his side, whereas he apparently took out the uh, APHE shell for the second shot to try and go for the rear, but since I was angry in my hull, he bounced off. And all the tracer fire is coming in. Now I have to move. Given that the M46 had no problem going around us, I don't feel safe in my own base anymore. The M41 Baldock comes for another shot, but he stays just a second too long and I take him out as well. Two kills down. Now I have to move forward. Our team currently consists of myself in the IS-6, a Kugelblitz and an ME262. Now, neither of my teammates can really deal with the tank in the cap, so it is up to me. There's a P-47 going for an attack run for me, but the Kugelblitz takes him out in a glorious ball of fire. <laughs> now, given that we do have air support from our teammate, as well as the SBA support from the Kugelblitz, I feel relatively safe in going forwards. Now, I want you to watch the way I approach this enemy heavy tank. Look at the way I'm rotating my turret, look at the way I'm angling my turret. You see, the I-6 does have weak spots. They are very tiny weak spots, but the thing also has a very big gun. The weak spots are two of the opt optical slits on the turret front for the gunner side. Weak spots, kind of. They do have a problem with uh, the gunner optic kind of taking out shots. But he can penetrate through that. Now, I try to angle my turret to deny him the shot to my gunner, make him bounce. The, there's a P47 that comes in and rockets me and tracks me. 
which means I can't really move and I have to take this guy down. He's using the 50 caliber MG fire to blind me and I can't say anything, but I don't need first person view. Going to first into third person view, I take the shot to the lower plate. Oh no, God, that's bombs! Bombs! You see, uh, bombs have been nerfed a while ago. <laughs> And whilst it did take out my tracks, they weren't enough to take down my tank. But I'm not quite in the clear just yet, even though I have done the Herculean job of taking out three tanks that were sniping into our spawn. There's an M26 approaching from the side, and he has a quiet target, and I'm immobilized right now. He takes a shot, but... bounces! Does no damage, and this is just the moment where I repair my tracks, I turn around and he has no chance. He's an M26. My guess is he was using the APHE shell, which uh, is just absolutely horrible on the 90mm gun. It has like 167mm of penetration maximum. It is really quite bad. And as such, he bounces off the side. I'm not quite sure where he was aiming, but he should have killed me there. In fact, there have been so many moments where I should have, where I should have been killed in this game. I should have been killed when the M46 came from behind. I should have been killed when the P47 dropped bombs. I should have been killed when an M26 came from the side. But I wasn't. And I'm still alive. And... All of a sudden... Things are turning around. Now, we are still at the numbers at the disadvantage here. There are currently four enemy tanks left alive, two free of our team. And I have a couple of options to make. If I stay in our base and capture our zone, the enemy is going to know exactly where I am, which is not exactly something that I want to let them know. I can go all the way across the map and try to capture the enemy base. However, being that I'm the only tank that can really do that, I don't think that crossing the entire map by myself and then waiting a couple of minutes in the enemy capture zone will be very smart. So instead, I go for the ambush option. In fact, this particular spot on this particular game mode, on this particular map, is excellent. It's really, really the perfect ambush position. From either side, I have elevations that shield myself from uh, visual uh, identification from the enemy, as well as making me scythe from the sides, allowing me to only point to front towards any possible venue of, um, of interaction, of spotting of combat which just so happens to be where the strongest of my armor is and so we lay in wait i'm going to wait for the enemy to come and fair enough m42 tries to hightail it for our um, for our spawn apparently trying to go for our kugel blitz but well 122 millimeter APHE cells have a nasty tendency of hull breaking stuff like this Absolutely no chance. And look at how sneaky this thing is. That's one of the things about the IS-6. Despite being a heavy tank, it is surprisingly mobile and it's surprisingly sneaky as well. You can actually play this thing like a medium. And as a next victim. A pattern. Again. He had no idea where we were. Where we were. His teammate didn't tell him where we were. He probably didn't even know where we were. Where we were. And he never even saw the death coming. Perfect shot to the side, into the fighting compartments, 122 mid HE doing its work. And all of a sudden, the odds have changed. Whereas before we were in a 3 vs 4, now we're in a 3 vs 1. Those two tanks are booted out of the game, they didn't have any more respawns. The uh, enemy aircraft, there was an AP-80 flying around, which was taken out by our ME-262. So now it's myself, the Google Blitz, and the ME-262 against one last opponent. Now it would actually be a more smart idea to go for the enemy capture zone, however there are only 5 minutes left in the game, and I don't feel confident enough in being able to do that. To cross the map and capture in 5 minutes. Now we do have the point advantage. And I think to myself, maybe if I can capture our home base, and if we do have the point advantage, when the timer runs out, we're going to win this game. So I put myself in this certain position. Given that the, that the flag is kind of open and the enemy can come from any direction, really, I try to put my rear against this rock to save myself. I try to put my, t my gun towards one side and essentially just limit the venues of um, line of sights where they can come from. But here an engine. 
And in fact, there he is. I heard this guy. I heard this guy with my headset. And I know exactly where he is now. That is an M36 gun motor carriage, 90mm M3 cannon, but he doesn't get heat FS. And he knows he's screwed. There's nothing this guy can do against the IS-6. Technically, he could he could go for my cannon barrel, disable my cannon barrel and try and flank around whilst I repair. But realistically, there's nothing really he can do and he just, well... It's already terrifying enough seeing an enemy tank advancing towards you. It's even more terrifying when it's an IS-6. People really, really are afraid of this tank, for a good reason. Now I tried to offer him a, a truce, I tried to offer him a peace treaty. He fought well, he's the last player left alive, but, well, the Kuglitz has other ideas, and honestly... I, I just feel like put him out of, of his misery. Poor guy. And... that is the game won. Eight kills in the IS-6. An absolute monster of a tank. Now... Let's see what the results are like, actually. What kind of results did we get from this match? 107,000 silver lines, and look at the research points. With a premium account and a premium tank, and a premium tank. However, without a premium booster, we got 11,000 research points, vehicle research points. Eight kills, two accurate kills, one cap, one assist, two deaths. Top of the leaderboard with 5k. This tank enables you to do that. No easy thing. Many... There, there's really a discussion between if this tank is OP or not. Now, the truth is... Kind of. When this tank gets up tiered, it pretty much plays like any other tank. The gun is mediocre at best, not having really much in terms of penetration, especially not at this kind of tier. And your hull armor won't really save you against heat FS or hash shells, the higher Kevlar hash shells. They can sometimes save you against the RE251's hash shell, given that there's a 20% modifier, random roll chance of penetration on that. But most of the time, hash and heat FS is going to pretty much defeat you. And given that you only have four crew, which are also very compacted, you generally tend to blow up in one shot. However, when you get down tiers, this thing is extremely strong. The armor is pretty much immune against any type of APHE shell. In fact, you can even face a mouse, and it's like the Battle of Titans. You can't penetrate the mouse, the mouse is going to have issues penetrating you as well, if you angle your turret and stuff like that, and if you, and if you don't present your weak spots, the mouse isn't going to penetrate you either. So imagine anything else. King Tigers! <laughs> Good luck with that. T-34s with the salt shot can sometimes penetrate you, but even then they still have to aim for the weak spots. It's, this tank is just, it, it really is the definition of a heavy tank, of a tank that can take shots like no other tank can. Now I'm going to admit, this gameplay had a lot of luck. There was definitely a lot of luck involved in this game, as I've, sh as I've seen you. I should have died when the M46 flanked. I should have died when the M26 came from the side. I should have died when the P-47 dropped its bombs. But I didn't. And I can pretty confidently say that I wouldn't have been able to pull this kind of game off in any other tank. That's just the power of the IS-6. It is not foolproof, it is not idiot proof. You can still die in the IS-6. However, playing the IS-6 is essentially like playing a single-player uh, single game, going into the menu and lowering the difficulty setting to easy. That's, that's really what this tank is like. So, at least in my own opinion, the IS-6 is definitely overperforming, and you can also see that by the, um, by the stats as well. Despite being a tank that's available to everyone to buy, so uh, you, can, you can bet that there are going to be quite a, quite a lot of new players who just buy this tank to get into, into rank 4. Despite all that, this tank still has about a 54% win rate in the 2KD in realistic mode, which really just is a testament to the power of this tank. And as such, it honestly it does deserve a higher battle rating. However, it can't just be do it can't just be up tiered like this, because this tank is much like the jumbo. It works because of its armor. Okay, given unlike the jumbo, this thing also has a great mobility, 44 km per hour top speed. Yes. However, much like the jumbo, it has great armor, but a kind of crappy gun. It's definitely not the best gun at this tier. So if you up tier it, the gun is going to become even worse. Say you have to face off against Chieftains, for example, which, okay, you occasionally do, 
But you can kind of guess the point. You need to, to be able to still stay in a BR where you can penetrate stuff with your gun, but not have your armor be completely useless either, which happens when you go into an up tier. Now, my personal solution to this would actually be... Give the swing a post-war shell. There is a post-war shell which has higher penetration for the 22 mm gun, which was found on the IS-2-1944, although I think it has been removed. If you give that to, to the IS-3, you could bump it up to 7.3, honestly, if not more. But at this point it's just my own speculations and I don't want to bore you guys too much. So without further ado, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this pretty epic game. I know I did. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed also the different camera angles of, well, showing you the battle. And I actually want to hear you got your guys' opinion on the IS-6 in the comment section down below. Have you driven it yourself? Have you faced off against it? What do you think about the thing? Anyways, lads, the next video is going to be the Cast Rant Part 2. It is almost, almost finished. I'm also going to talk a bit about the upcoming 1.71 updates, since there are some new news regarding that. And I'll see you until then. As always, lads, my name is Mike is Boom. And thank you for watching. You can lift your head up to the sky. Take a deeper breath and give it time. You can walk the path among the lines with your shattered frame of mind. Is that you could always stay. We can wait right here and play until somehow you can find.